Penny Wong, welcome to the program. Good to be with you, David. So both the Defence Minister and the Defence Industry Minister in their speeches there really cited China's military build-up as a reason why we need to go down the path of nuclear submarines. Are we now in an arms race with China? Well, first, if I could pick up on the broader question, which is why that discussion was necessary, which I think the panel was mm. talking through. Uh, I've said for some time, we've said for some time, including before the last election, we face the most challenging strategic circumstances uh, since the end of World War II. Uh, and what we are doing uh, as a government and as a party uh, is discussing in, in a respectful way the strategic rationale for what we are doing, including AUKUS. Uh, and I think that's what you saw over these last few days, and particularly the AUKUS debate, where you know, people of good faith, of good heart, had different views. Uh, you saw the, the government, uh, from the Prime Minister down, articulating the strategic rationale for AUKUS. Uh, now, I don't think about it in the terms you describe. I think about this as how do we achieve uh, and ensure a peaceful, stable and prosperous region in which sovereignty is respected. A key part of that uh, is strategic balance. Uh, that, that includes military deterrence, uh, but it also includes reassurance through diplomacy and engagement. But your, your colleague Pat Conroy, the Defence Industry Minister, did say uh, that an arms race is already happening before our eyes. I, is that your view? Well, I think this has been you know, articulated certainly in the context of the, de the defence strategic review, uh, it is quite clear uh, the uh, build-up that we've seen in our region. Mm. Uh, but instead of talking about it, we are uh, like the previous government did. We want to do something about it, and what we want to do about it uh, is ensure we contribute. Uh, to strategic balance, which underpins the sort of stability and prosperity and peace that we all seek uh, uh, in in our region, but what does as that well mean? as engage with other uh, yeah. engage with other countries. In simple terms, though, if China were to keep building even more submarines and warships, would we have to do the same? Well, look, let's I, I, not. I don't want to talk about this hypothetically. I want to talk about what's really happening. What, what is happening is we are we are seeing a, a change in strategic balance in the region. Mm. We are seeing a more challenging uh, strategic circumstances. The question is not how we, you know, what, what sort of commentating is not commentating about it. The question is what we do about it, and what we have to do with other countries is to ensure that there is a strategic balance in the region. That that. You know, we, we want to make sure that you know, no, no country ever thinks that conflict is worth it. That's mm. the calculus we always have to change, and we do that both by deterrence and by reassurance. Wouldn't that's what AUKUS contributes to, just as that's what our diplomacy, our development assistance and our mm. engagement contribute to. You, you say we should focus on what's, what's happening. Can I ask mm. you this, Minister? Is China making the world more dangerous? Well, I, I think the, the, we know... Uh, and we've, I think we've been very upfront about it, what is happening in terms of the military build-up in the reg region. We know that there is greater strategic competition between the great powers. We know what is happening in our region. We've seen recently exercises in the Taiwan Strait. We've seen events in, in the Philippines. Sounds now, like a yes. It is making the well, world well, more dangerous. Well, no, well, you can use your words, I'll use mine. What, what, what I know is we came to government at a time where uh, we were upfront. Uh, about these being the most challenging strategic circumstances Australia's, Australia faces. And mm. the response to that is to be calm and consistent. The response to that is to do everything we can to ensure peace and to avert conflict. And that is what this government will do. Just a, a few uh, other details on AUKUS. We heard mm. repeated references to the unionised jobs that will be created mm. in building the submarines. Can you just clarify, will only union members be allowed to build them? I think that this reflects the reality that, uh, that these are very well organised unions in this area. I was the, the shareholder minister for the Australian Submarine Corporation. I can, can tell you that you know, those unions were uh, very, uh, very important partners in making sure that uh, the, the Collins class sustainment uh, got back on track. So, but you can be a non-union member and still well, build well, a you know, we, right? we, we, <laughs> uh, these are these are industrial matters that unions will deal with. But I have, I, I know these unions well. Uh, I know that they are very clear about the national interest uh, in uh, you know, making sure their members and the workforce contribute to our 
capability, <laughs> uh, and I've no doubt they will do that. But the government's not going to require union membership to build them. Is it? Oh, well, I, I don't recall that ever being part of our, our procurement uh, processes. But my point is, I think the, the unions are a very important part okay. of the tripartite approach to making sure we improve our national capability, which is what AUKUS is about and which is what the, de the Defence Strategic Review is about. One of the main concerns raised at the conference was about the nuclear waste. Uh, mm. And the point was made, when it comes to high level nuclear waste, mm. no country has really worked this out, have they? Mm. Uh, look, nuclear waste is a, a big challenge. Uh, it is uh, one of the, the consequences of going down this path that we, we, are, we will have to deal with, and we know that, which is why uh, we're already starting that process of working through how this will happen. Uh, obviously, we're talking decades away. Yeah. Um, given the, the time frame, we're, we're talking when the, the, we don't get the first um, orca submarine uh, for, for a, a number of decades. So the reality is this is some decades off, but it, it is right that people are raising it. Uh, we know this is a challenge and, and we, will, we will make sure there's a process in place to will address it, it. Will it end up at Woomera? <laughs> I just said that there'd be a process in place to address this. So just I don't so, just think so I'll be picking it. Out it. Right. No, fair enough. Um, the, the other concern too about whether this is going to lead to more nuclear pro proliferation. Mm. Uh, will Australia sign the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons? Okay, there are two points in your question. No, AUKUS does not lead to greater proliferation of nuclear material. I want to say that really clearly. Mm. Australia, under both parties of government, uh, but particularly under Gareth Evans and, and the Labor Party, has had a very proud history uh, of advocating for and working for disarmament and supporting non-proliferation, and particularly uh, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, which is the key mechanism by which the world manages this risk. Uh, AUKUS will be consistent. We will work with the International Atomic Energy Agency to make sure it is consistent with our obligations, because we have, frankly, a gold standard credentials as a nation when it comes to uh, nuclear non-proliferation, and we will protect that. Uh, what I'd also say in relation uh, to the TPNW, we share the ambition that the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons has for a world free of nuclear weapons, uh, and which is why uh, I've sent observers uh, to uh, the, recent, the, the, the last conference. It's why we are uh, uh, looking at and considering very closely the Treaty. But I would again make this point. The key architecture internationally to ensure that the world addresses the, the Build up in uh, and the management of, of nuclear material uh, has to be the NPT. Uh, that is what the nuclear parties have signed up to, and that's what we should be pressing them for. Okay, but on the treaty to ban nuclear weapons, what's your own view on this? Do you want Australia to sign it? Uh, I think it, it provides a very important um, uh, tool internationally for progressing this discussion. Uh, I think, as, as I've said previously, there are, uh, there are questions about the architecture, whether or not uh, there's universality, whether or not uh, it, you know, it's consistency with the NPT, uh, and enforcement and verification, all of which are the hallmarks mm. of the NPT. So, so we are being constructive uh, about engagements. We've, we've set out mm. the principles by which we'd consider it. But I again want to say, I know that it, the TPNW is a, a very important articulation, particularly from civil society, about why people rightly want a world without nuclear weapons. The way you deliver that best, the way you deliver outcomes best, is through the non-proliferation treaty. OK, but your own department has previously said it, it wouldn't be mm. in Australia's interest to sign this nuclear pro uh, prohibition on nuclear weapons treaty. Uh, and and I've, I've taken, a, I suppose, a more considered view than the previous government. I, I see the, ben the government sees the benefit of... Uh, the discussion of the TPNW, mm. and I think, you know, it reflects the aspirations that people around the world have, which is we want a world that is free of nuclear weapons. Mm. And the question is how best do we get there and how best, particularly in the, the context of strategic competition, do we keep pressing for, um, uh, you know, disarmament uh, and certainly transparency. Uh, let me turn to China. Mm. You visited there in December. The mm. Trade Minister went in May. The Prime Minister is planning on going by the end of the year. Is there an imbalance here? When will China send a minister to Australia? 
Well, one of the things I discussed with my then counterpart, um, uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, uh, when I was in Beijing, as you said, was the restarting of the foreign and strategic dialogue with, the, with China. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, the next iteration of that we would expect uh, would be in Australia. So uh, I know officials are talking through uh, when that would be convenient for uh, Chinese, uh, a Chinese minister to attend uh, the dialogue. Uh, but look, the engagement does matter. Uh, you know, what did, the way I've described it, I think uh, we've made clear we'll cooperate with China where we can, we'll disagree where we must, and we will engage in our national interest because even if you don't agree, uh, it is important to engage. That's central to the navigation of both cooperation but also of difference. So are you expecting Foreign Minister Wang Yi to visit soon? Uh, officials are working through when, when, when this might work. Uh, we would anticipate that dialogue to occur in Australia at an appropriate time. Th this year? Well, I'll, I'll let you know right. when, the, when, when dates are set, David, I promise. Uh, OK. Uh, one of the big sticking points in the relationship mm. is the ongoing situation for Australian journalist Chung mm. Lei. She's been detained now for just over three years um, on fairly vague national security charges. About a year ago, she did face uh, a closed mm. trial. Uh, we're yet to hear, <coughs> or she's yet to receive a verdict. Do you have any idea what the charges actually relate to? Uh, look, I want to say very clearly the Australian government retains concerns, holds deep concerns uh, in relation both to Dr Young, Young Hun Jun, mm. who's also been detained, and a as well as Ms Cheng Lei. We continue to advocate uh, for uh, their return to their families. We continue to advocate for their interests and our concerns are expressed and raised in uh, every senior interaction that we have uh, with uh, the uh, Chinese government. Uh, we'll continue to do that. What do you say about their legal system, though, if even you don't well, know what she's charged with? Well, well, I don't know that it is helpful to Dr Young or Ms Cheng Lei for the Foreign Minister of Australia, in the role I have, to be right. commenting on another country's legal system. Best to hold your tongue, basically. Well, what I would say, well, you can make comment, I, I can't, I have a role, okay. right? So, but what I would say is we will continue to advocate for them. And, and I would say what I have said privately, publicly, that I think Australians do look at uh, Ms Cheng Lei and... and uh, Australians do want to see a mother reunited with her children, yeah. just as they wish to see Dr. Dr. Young released. In uh, the lead up to the Labor conference, mm. you changed Australia's position on Israel. You've gone back to mm. declaring the West mm. Bank and Gaza as occupied territories. Mm. Um, does that mean you think Israel should withdraw from those territories? Well, look, uh, you're right. You, the, how you phrased the question in the first part was right. We, we've returned to a more centrist position. Uh, and a position, if I just may say this, because there's been a lot of mis, you know, uh, incorrect information around. Uh, the Morrison government, uh, in fact, passed the coalition and Australian governments, but the Morrison government actually did agree or well, uh, that it was subject to uh, UN Security Council resolutions, which both referenced the illegality of settlements uh, and... Uh, occupied Palestinian territories. It's just that what they said to the voters of Wentworth differed from what they were saying internationally. OK, what about now, uh, your but, government? Uh, I'm just trying to get to what this means now. Should Israel withdraw from those uh, occupied look, look, territories? No, no we, we are returning... We are making a change in nomenclature. What we would urge, what we would urge, is the parties to return to peace negotiations. What we would urge uh, is the cessation of violence from both sides, uh, mm. particularly the targeting of civilians, and, and we would continue to abhor all violence. But, uh, but I want to make this point. The fact that we have articulated this position, consistent with the UK, the EU and New Zealand, uh, does not prejudge final status issues, including the, the final final status of Jerusalem. Does that include East so, Jerusalem? Is no, East that's Jerusalem? My, that's my, yeah, what's your position sorry. on East Jerusalem? Well, well, I think East Jer Jerusalem post um, 67 people uh, uh, have uh, has been regarded under international law as occupied. But Jerusalem is a final status issue. So by using the term that others use, but the you know the majority of the international com community use of occupied Palestinian territories, does not mean the Australian government would prejudge final status issues, including uh, including of Jerusalem. Uh, despite the fact that you know, some people wish to say that, that that's what we're doing. We're not. And neither is the rest of the international community. Well, and I think on this yeah. issue, I know this is an issue people feel deeply about. Mm. Uh, we tried to take a principled and consistent and coherent position. And we tried to make, you know, that is how we have approached this issue. 
uh, not through the prism of domestic politics, but to, to try and return Australia to, to a more consistent and principled position the, the, internationally and, and domestically. The, the Labor Party platform now, uh, well again, calls mm. for recognition of a Palestinian state as, quote, an important priority. Um, when and, I guess importantly, under what circumstances would you do that? I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals about that. But why um, do you now? No, why well, because now? no, because David, because it's it, that the whole one of the reasons I've argued so strongly inside our party for that wording, uh, and I have been uh, probably the principal advocate of that wording for some years now, mm. uh, is that I, I do believe that this is something the party is entitled to express a view on. On, but ultimately, these are sensitive diplomatic decisions. They are. That but is are, there a reason well, why you're finish, not declaring please let it me, now? Let me, yeah, let me finish this. That should be made by a cabinet, uh, and a cabinet should make such decisions when considering all of the diplomatic issues that would necessarily um, be before it. So, I'm not going to get drawn as much as you ask me into hypotheticals about that. It's not. Uh, it's not so much a hypothetical with respect. Is, a lot of uh, those who would want you to declare a Palestinian state might wonder why you're not right now. Sure, uh, and uh, what I'd say is there are, you know, we have taken, you know, in the last 15 months, uh, I think you'll see whether it's uh, in returning Jerusalem to a final status issue, in our rebalancing of our votes, uh, making them more consistent uh, in the, the UN context, or the return to uh, a more centrist uh, mm. and um, or nomenclature in relation to occupied Palestinian territories and the re recognition that settlements are illegal, which is in gr great part a response to events on the ground that we mm. are seeing this year. Uh, what you'll see is consistency uh, uh, in how we approach this issue. Foreign Minister Penny Wong, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you for joining us this morning. It's been great fun. Good to speak <laughs> with you. you too.